Okay, I think we can get started. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to our webinar. This is part one of a three-part series on the IRA. Uh, this first webinar will cover the IRA, how we'll increase some of the demand with billions in rebates and tax credits, and are you ready? My name is Dolores Riley, and I'm with Residio. Can we advance to the next slide? This is an introduction to our brands here at Residio. Next. And this is our brand promise to our customers. And just a snapshot of who Residio is by the numbers, our products and solutions side, as well as ADI. Next. And our global success with our customers, you can see we have 11.3 million connected customers, over 200 distributor locations. We're the number one global distributor in security and energy. Uh, you could go next. And this is a snapshot of our full portfolio of our connected devices for the home, all of our products and solutions. Today we have two um, speakers with us. We have Kevin Hunt and Cynthia Adams, both with Pearl Certification, who'll be presenting our webinar today. So welcome, both of you. Thank you for joining us and presenting on our behalf today. Happy to be here. Thanks, Dolores. Thank you so much. Yes, also happy to be here today. So I am Cynthia Adams. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Pearl Certification, and I'm going to hop right in. Thank you all for joining us to learn more about the Inflation Reduction Act. Doubtless, this has been on your radar for at least a year now, and um, it's uh, it's gaining steam and momentum, and we're learning more and more about how these programs are going to roll out uh, with every passing day, more or less. So I'm going to give you a, a, a big helping of information here and um, kind of frame it for you as well in terms of when this is actionable in terms of your business. And just invite you to come back for the next webinar where we're gonna talk really specifically about the sorts of things you should be preparing for and how to go about doing that in order to achieve success with your business and the various rebate programs and the Inflation Reduction Act. A quick note about the company that I helped found, Pearl Certification. What we do is we document heating, cooling, and plumbing installations that, that you all as contractors do in order to help your customers' homes sell for more because they have these higher performing features. And because we are very selective about the contractors that we invite into our network, those that are in our network can be sure that they will be able to offer a value add to their customer, their low bid, low quality competitor cannot. And we help the companies shift the conversation from a focus on price to one that is also focused on value. And it is helping to boost contractor close rates in our network by five to 10%. We are nationwide. We've certified over um, close to 170,000 homes. We have over 200 contractors in network today. And um, a lot of these companies are companies that you know and recognize, as you can see here from the slide, we have some very reputable large businesses with whom we're honored uh, to work with today. So cutting now straight to the Inflation Reduction Act, we're going to talk about the tax credits and rebates. And I'm going to begin by giving you a bit of an overview here. Um, the tax credits from the Inflation Reduction Act are of course coming straight from the federal government. The Internal Revenue Service is the government agency that oversees the, the tax payments and, and tax credits. The rebates themselves, for residential energy efficient electrification and whole home energy efficiency, these rebates will come through the state energy offices. There is a state energy program grant that is the official procurement vehicle through which this money will fund. And that comes through the state energy office. I wanna note that if you ever hear anyone talking about a tax rebate, they've oil and water combine two things that don't go together. The tax credit comes from the federal government, the product rebate comes from the state energy office. Those are very different things. Um, and the rebates themselves are really meant to focus on low and moderate income households. In fact, 
approximately 40% of US households are qualify in the low income range. And typically only about 13% of these households participate in these types of programs. So the US Department of Energy really wants to prioritize a focus at the state level on ensuring that low and moderate income homeowners don't get left behind. And so there are actual program threshold requirements um, in, in the case of multifamily and in the case of the electrification rebate, you have to be of lower moderate income to even take advantage of that rebate. So we're gonna talk more about some of that, but I, as an overview, these are important things to keep in mind. So I'm gonna begin with the tax credit side of things. Tax credits are in effect today. They went into effect in January of 2023. So if you have been doing installations this year that would qualify for a tax credit, um, you, I hope, are documenting the necessary information for your customers because you may be inundated with requests come January 2024 as folks start engaging their tax accountants and their TurboTax and are immediately identified to the rebate, these um, credits existence. So. As a, as a note here, heat pumps can give up to a $2,000 tax credit, and there is a $1,200 tax credit limit for a constellation of some other types of installations, like insulation and um, water heating and furnaces and other things. And the total limit for the year would be $3,200 for that particular homeowner. Um, you can't carry the tax credit over from year to year like you can with the, the clean energy tax credits for solar, uh, but you can use it more than once. So if a homeowner were to replace some set of things in their house in 2023 um, and they qualify for a tax credit and then they went and did a different installation in 2024, they could qualify for a 2024 version of that same tax credit on a different install in their home. Okay, a couple of other things to note about the efficiency tax credit. It applies only to existing homes and remodels, not to new construction. It must be owner occupied. And there are some product requirements, of course, for the, the qualifications here, doors and windows, Energy Star, insulation, IECC code standard for two years prior. And then there's a directory of products that you can see in this, this link here. Um, for HVAC systems and water heating that meet the CEE standard. Um, I want to make a quick note here that I believe we're going to make this deck available by PDF uh, post the webinar. So all of these links are live and you'll be able to access any referenced websites through this presentation uh, post the um, post call today. Moving on again to some other additional miscellaneous information. Um, I did mention already that you can't carry the credit forward, but that you can qualify for the maximum amount every year in which improvements are made. Another thing that's important to note is that the rebates I'm going to turn to next in this conversation can in fact be combined with the tax credits. The rebates cannot be combined with each other on the same installation, but an individual rebate can be combined with a tax credit for the same installation. So for those homeowners that fall in that sweet spot of having tax liability and being of moderate income, they may find themselves with a, a pretty sweet incentive to make some of these improvements. And again, want to note that contractors should be sure to give your customers some kind of documentation for the efficiency rating of the installed system. They'll need to know the cost of the system and the date installed as backup for that tax credit. Moving on now to talk a little bit about the clean energy tax credits that are also available today. These tax credits have been around in some form for more than just this year, but what's new to this year is that the limit is back up to a full 30% and some other types of renewable energy related equipment have been included. So this is the first time that battery storage has been included as a clean energy tax credit um, offering. And as you can see, there are other things like roofing shingles and, and such that are also included. So if you are a company that installs renewable energy features, I'm sure you've already been talking this up with your customers, um, but it is an important thing for homeowners to know uh, if this is something that you, you sell to them. 
Okay, I'm going to turn now to talking about the rebate programs. And one thing to note both about the tax credits and the rebate programs is that these are long running programs. They were meant to be 10 years running from the point at which the legislation was passed. Um, so we're not talking about something that that's going to show up today and be gone the day after tomorrow. Uh, the tax credits currently don't have a budgetary limit on them. The rebates, of course, do because there is a set amount of rebate dollars made available for each program. And then those dollars are distributed to the states based upon a formula grant that is done by population size. So the states will have the monies out there until the monies are expended, but it's a significant amount of money and we expect these programs to have some longevity, in other words, to be around for years. Some things to understand about these programs, because I, th I think that there are a lot of folks that wonder, you know, it's past a year ago, it's been over a year, like when are these programs coming? What's taking them so long? So I wanna address that a little bit by telling you that the US Department of Energy issued program guidelines in July of, of this past year, um, July 27th. And the states have been waiting for those guidelines and the actual applications so that they can submit to the US Department of Energy to receive their, their grant funding through these rebate programs. So right now the states are in a bit of a mad scramble. The guidelines were a hundred pages long and there are a lot of asks in there of the states in order to form um, what we would think of as comp um, comprehensive and, um, and, and market transformational types of programs. So the states have a lot of work to do now in kind of pulling that vision together on how they're gonna implement these programs. Once they've done that, they'll probably go out to RFP for someone to manage those programs on their behalf because many state energy offices aren't that large and certainly many state energy office officials have never run an energy efficiency rebate program before. And then they're gonna want to engage professionals to do that on their behalf. So. From where we sit today, there may be a couple of states that jump into the fast track program and get something launched before the end of 2023, but we're talking probably no more than three to five states. The majority of states are going to be getting their applications in and their programs launched probably in the 2024 second half of the year and into 2025 timeframe. That's, that's the crystal ball view from where we sit. But a couple of other things to know about them. The, the programs themselves are meant to be what's termed as braided with other types of funding that's out there to support particularly low income households and being able to make comprehensive improvements without having to spend money out of pocket. So that could be that these programs are combined with utility rebates, philanthropic efforts going on in the community, or specific other government programs as well as things like manufacturer rebates. So part of what the states will be doing is working with the DOE to identify these other funding streams and then find ways to make that information available and useful in their programs um, for the contractors that are doing the work, the homeowners that are, are seeking to get this work done. I wanna underscore again though that the electrification rebate program and the home efficiency rebate program those two rebates cannot be combined for the same installation. They can be combined in the same household for different installations, but not for the same product. Something else about the states, they have all of these different plans that they have to submit to the DOE. Um, the implementation blueprint is the overall program plan, the market transformation plan I'm gonna talk a little bit more about in this presentation. Then they have um, data, um, quality assurance plans, um, consumer protection plans, things tied to contractor qualifications as well, and how they're going to meet the minimum requirements and the targets for low income customers in order to secure different tranches of funding. So it's a fairly complicated lift on the state's behalf. And so it's one of the reasons why it's gonna take a little while for people to get these programs launched. From a contractor perspective though, something that's important to know with both the electrification and the whole home efficiency rebate program is that some form of energy modeling will be required. With the electrification program, the concern is really about utility bill impacts because there are some areas of the states where the cost for electricity is significantly higher than say the cost for national ga natural gas. 
So you could have an, an instance where a contractor installs equipment that is more efficient, and yet the homeowner's utility bill goes up. And that would be a very, very bad thing, particularly for a low income homeowner. And we want to make sure that we avoid those sorts of situations. One way to avoid that is to run some calcs and figure out what will be the bill impact with doing the fuel switch. Uh, and then on the home efficiency rebate program, there was a modeling requirement in order to qualify for a particular level of rebates. And we'll talk more about that. There will be approved software and the DOE will be the one doing the work to create that list of approved software. So it won't be a complete free for all. Anybody's software goes. Nope, that won't be the case. They want to have some consistency and confidence in the predictions that the software is making. So there will be an approved list. Okay, let's dive into the electrification rebate a little bit. This is $4.5 billion available, as I mentioned, on a formulaic basis to grants to states. States have to apply for the grant. They're not just written a check. And those applications have different requirements that are gated to tranches of money. The total amount for electrification is $4.5 billion. It is a point of sale rebate that's meant to reduce the out-of-pocket costs for the low or moderate income homeowner. So this will be taken off at the point of sale. It's not the type of rebate that the homeowner will apply for and then wait for a check to come to them. They are working very closely. Uh, the DOE is with the state energy offices and the state energy offices are expected to work closely with their community, particularly the contracting community, to dial in tightly the amount of time from which the installation gets done and the rebate gets sent back to the contractor. And there are limits as to how much time that can take. I think they're looking at somewhere between 30 to 60 days at the most. This particular rebate program requires that the owner be less than 150% of area median income in order to access. If the homeowner is below 80% of area median income, then in theory, 100% of the cost for these installations could be covered by the rebate. States have some leeway as to the rebate size for low income households. And it covers up to 50% of the cost for households that fall between 80% and 150% of AMI. We expect that the states will make, um, they're going to create the guidelines for figuring out whether or not the customer you're talking to income qualifies. There will be some households that have what they call categorical qualification because the homeowner is already on some other type of federal program. And so their income has been verified. We expect the states will try to target those households um, kind of out the gate. And then there will be other, we've heard that there are other types of software that may tap into um, the IRS's database in order to pre-qualify customers for this particular rebate program. What everyone wants to avoid is a situation where you as a contractor are asking someone for their tax returns. Um, nobody wants that. So I, I think at this point, I don't have all of the answers, nor does anyone about what each particular state's strategy will be for ensuring that those homeowners can in fact qualify. And people have talked about self-attestation. The homeowner says they qualify, then we assume they qualify. Um, those details are still to be worked out. But if your concern as a contractor is you, you don't want to get into a situation where you, you have sensitive personal information from your customer, um, people are definitely trying to avoid that. Here's what the rebates look like though. They're pretty rich for different types of improvements. We have appliance building material type rebates. And as you can see here, there's certainly water heating, um, heat pumps, and then other types of things um, that also qualify, including the electrical wiring and panel type work that might need to be done in order to bring a, an older home up to code so that they actually can install something that's going to draw a higher electrical load on that home. So quick snapshot of the rebates that are available. Again, point of sale, the goal being a quick reimbursement to the contractor from the state energy office and um, more details on the income qualification part as, as these programs get going. Moving now to talk about the Homes Rebate Program, 
This one is $4.3 billion, different rebate program altogether. It applies to both single and multifamily properties. The states are required to allocate 40% or whatever their state average is to low income single family. So if you're, and I actually looked this number up, 40% is, is pretty much the national average. There are some states that have 39% of their households that could qualify as low income and some states have as high as 41 or 42%. But nationally, most states are kind of hovering in that upper 30, lower 40 percentage for low income households. So individual states need to reserve a significant portion of that funding for the lower income households and 10% has to be dedicated to multifamily in particular. There is a $200 incentive for contractors who complete work in a low income home. So you could get $200 extra on, on every job uh, if, it's, if it's in a low income home that you're making these improvements. As I mentioned, there's not an income requirement for the homeowner to participate, but if you are income qualified, you do get a richer rebate. And as I said before, states have to have a carve out for low income. A couple of other things about this particular program, there is a compliance requirement for the, in, the energy modeling, and that is it has to be BPI 2400 compliant. This particular standard is a utility bill calibration standard. And what that means is you'll have to get 12 months of utility bills from your customer. States are likely to set up some way to do that through technology as opposed to somebody like printing off bills and handing them to you. Again, nobody wants that. Likely what will happen is the customer will sign a utility waiver and then you'll be able to access through the, the modeling software those utility bills, pull them in, and then use them to ensure that the energy projections that are coming from that modeling engine match what the house's usage actually is. The other important thing to know is that the BPI 1200 standard is required for the assessment itself. That means that the assessor will have to do a blower door test to determine the air infiltration. And if there is some type of work being done that impacts the um, combustion safety, then they will have to do a combustion safety test as well. There are some areas of the country where doing this type of work is standard in the different types of home performance improvement improvements that are done and that are rebated by utilities. Um, I'm thinking of like New Jersey, for example. And there are other areas of the US where all of this sounds like a whole bunch of gobbledygook coming out of my mouth. So depending upon what type of contractor you are and where in the US you come from, some of this may sound familiar to your business as usual, and some of it may sound completely foreign. I will say that there are other entities out there, including Pearl, that are working hard to ensure that we create the most market friendly tools out there from a technology perspective. Um, and there is an opportunity for you all at your state level to get engaged on the, the requirements. Um, there is the, the state itself has to look at workforce development and contractor engagement as a part of their application process. And they have to actually justify to the DOE why they're not going to apply for workforce training dollars if, if their intent is not to do that. But another way, the expectation from the DOE is that all of the states should be applying for this workforce training dollars and they should be doing what they can to bring more qualified professionals into the market so that these rebates and these programs can roll out successfully and smoothly. Um, the last thing that I'll mention on the Homes Rebate Program is that it requires a third party certification in order to access the rebate. And I'm going to talk more about why in a moment. So very high level, this chart shows you the, the two different savings thresholds. You have to hit at least 20% modeled energy savings threshold and 20 to 34% provides a $2,000 up to 50% of the project cost for anybody who's not low income. And if you are low income, then $4,000 or up to 80% of the project cost comes in the form of a rebate. And as you can see, the rebate numbers double for any improvement package that projects to save 35% or more of, of energy. I mentioned uh, in a previous slide that states have to submit a market transformation plan. 
uh, this is a really big deal. It was not part of the original legislation, but it was part of the DOE guidelines that were issued in July. And 25% of the state's rebate dollars is gated on the submission and, and approval of a market transformation plan. Now, there are a couple components in the market transformation plan. I'm going to focus on one on this slide, but I will tell you that community engagement and um, contractor training, workforce development are other aspects of that market transformation plan. This particular slide is focusing on the connection between the improvements that contractors would do and home valuation. So just to read it out loud, the states must describe how they will enable the market to recognize the value of homes that have been upgraded through the home energy rebates, including at time of sale. At a minimum, the plan must include a strategy for aggregating home data from the home assessment and or home certification and making such data available to real estate stakeholders. This is a market-based mechanism that the legislation and the guidelines are seeking to set in motion that will quantify the type of value that you all bring with your installations to the home's equity. And the thinking here is that we create a flywheel effect where homes that are more high performing become more visible in the resale transaction. And that fuels more demand for those types of properties. It fuels more demand for homeowners to make these types of improvements. So kind of playing out the, the, the wheel here, states drive market transformation, transformation through the education and the marketing they're gonna do consumers around these programs and through the monetary incentives that are, are available to homeowners. Contractors and builders are gonna create inventory by the work that you do. And because we have this certification in place, the real estate industry will have the specifics that they need to include this information in the multiple listing service. And then these agents can market these homes with the certifications and educate buyers about the quality of life benefits they're going to have better under air quality, increased comfort and lower bills as a result of these sorts of improvements the rebates are funding. So this type of market transformation is meant to be not a trend, but a way that we are moving as a society when it comes to how we think about improving, buying and selling homes. And I'm gonna to point to this one statistic just to let you know that some of this is already working today. Zonda is a company that does all kinds of surveys, reports and stats, primarily for the new construction space but uh, they did something for home remodeling in 2023. And what you're seeing here already is that HVAC electrification conversion is showing a, a positive ROI for that particular um, installation when it comes to equity value. And these programs haven't even launched yet. So very interesting stuff. Okay, I'm gonna talk to you now about some resources for you to consider. I will say that ACCA has been doing a lot of work for their members in order to create some, some very practical types of resources, like say an FAQ for your customers um, on the rebate and tax credit programs. Um, so check that out. And if you're not a member, maybe now's a good time to think about joining. There are also informations through all of these other rebates, and I'm not gonna read them ad nauseum here. I'll just say that um, these are government based rebates and by and large, uh, they're going to be updated as the latest and greatest information is made available. So they might be good resources for you to have as well as your own state energy offices rebate bookmarked somewhere so you can keep an eye on what they're doing and when. And then lastly, Pearl can help, which is why Residio has us here today. We're not only a font of good information about the, the federal programs, but we're also going to play an integral role in, in the federal programs um, at least in terms of, of, of how we see the benefits we bring. So first of all, third-party certification that we offer today does in fact meet the IRA requirements. So if you are working with us in our network, you're already able to leverage this type of information and differentiation in your sales talk track. Um, we cannot say for certain at this point that we will be the only certification offered in any given state, but what we can tell you is that we are the only certification we know of today that meets the IRA requirements. 
Something else that you get with the Pearl Network is a dedicated support team to ensure that you can effectively leverage IRA in the certification. We have an FAQ ourself. We have tax credit documentation we share out with customers post-install. And then we also have in our consumer-facing app, a rebate search and calculator that can help homeowners understand what benefits are available to them. So in other words, it is a done-for-you solution that ties your work to home value. And a couple of quick screenshots of the product. The home certification package does come co-branded with you, the contractor. And we'll have some other benefits in there for those of you that are doing Residio installations and the way in which Residio and its products are called out in the certification report. Importantly, there is a, an appraisal addendum that comes with every certification package. And this provides the appraiser with what he or she needs in order to consider a contributory value for the product installation that you provided. And I've just kind of enlarged the section in here that talks about the HVAC related equipment. And then for the real estate, the listing agent, when or if your homeowner decides to put their house into the market, we have a turnkey marketing package for that real estate agent that really helps them talk about the benefits of the installation and um, tells them what specific data fields we've identified in that house that they can then check off in their multiple listing service. Typically agents don't like to check those data fields because they don't want the liability associated with saying something about the house that they don't know for sure based upon their professional education, whether or not that's true. So we we, we give them the information that they need. And with that, um, I can pause for questions or Kevin, I can hand it over to you. Um, and then we can circle to questions later. How would you like to roll? Gosh, let's... Um... Let's take a few moments if there are questions from the audience, um, we can answer them now or we should be wrapping up within the next 10 minutes and we'll have some time at the end. So <clears throat> Dolores, I don't know if you see any, any questions in the q and A. I I had seen one early on and responded to it, but. Uh, I do not see any new questions. No, but okay. if anyone has one, they can put it in the chat there and we'll be happy to answer it. Or the the Q and A logo, so as yeah, you the Q &A. scroll yeah. down at the bottom of the screen, either's fine. I, I suppose we can handle that uh, by way of a chat as well. So I think we'll we'll move on, and hopefully there'll be some some questions. We covered an immense amount of information, so I'm anticipating there's there's some questions out there. Um, Oh, there are some questions. Yeah, yeah. So we just needed to tell people where to go. So why don't we, since since there's a handful of them, um, and Frank- Would someone like to do the honors of reading them and then uh, sure. I can go ahead and, and address them? Sure, I can read them. The first one, is there a list of states that have opted into the rebate program? There is not a list of states yet. Uh, there are some states that have said, I can think of one, Florida, that they're not going to take the money. But we, most of the states that we've spoken with in, intend to take the money. Um, I'll note that if they don't take the money, their allotment will be spread across the states that have taken the money. So it's not like the money just goes away. It just goes to some other state is, is what will happen. Um, but as, as we know which states plan to opt in, we'll, we'll certainly... Um, we'll be keeping a running list. Right now, we, we only know of one state that has said that they intend not to take the grant and that's been Florida. Okay, all right, the next question. Will this rebate be for pre-existing home with HP systems? The rebates are meant to be for existing homes. They will not be retroactive. So if you have a customer who installed something in 23 and the rebate program launches in 24, they will not be retroactive. They will only be for installations that are done after the program has launched. Okay, and the next question, how do you find out about your state's participation? I would check out your state energy office's um, website. My guess is that most of them have something post there right now that tells everybody this is all TPD, that they're, they're working on it. Um, states will be doing outreach to contractors, um, probably starting with organizations that represent them um, like ACCA, uh, in order to get 
some some feedback on the programs as they roll. Other nonprofits that I know are engaged in this are the Building Performance Association, BPA, and they are keeping their members very up to date. Um, the Building Performance Institute, BPI, would be another one to check out. Uh, they also are, are quite engaged in um, providing feedback on these programs as, as we get further into their, their uh, design and implementation. Okay, thanks. The next question, do we have the efficiency requirement on either rebate program? Um, so for the home energy efficiency rebate program, the whole house one, the efficiency requirement is a modeled energy savings of 20% or higher. And, you know, it really depends on the install package that you plan to do. So there's not a requirement for what that install package has to include. There is a requirement for the savings threshold of 20%. And then for the electrification rebate, I imagine Energy Star will be the threshold for the, the products there. Okay, we have one other question. Someone's interested in getting the cost associated with the Pearl certification. That Kevin will be up next to talk to you about that. So I don't want to steal <laughs> yeah. his thunder. Yeah. I think that's it on our questions. Great. We'll have some time at the end as well. Yep. Okay, um, Cynthia, if you'd please advance the slides. So what we haven't mentioned yet is we've been working very closely with a number of folks on the Residio team in forming what I think we would refer to as a strategic alliance. And we'll talk a little bit about that, but hopefully you've gotten a sense uh, by the little bit that Cynthia shared about what it is that we do to connect the products you're selling Residio, you know, connected products and services and your brand to be able to help that homeowner create more value in their home. Very different deliverable from the preponderance of sales and marketing tools that are out there in the marketplace for contractors and pros like you. And what we think we do is give you a real different way to shift the conversation from price to value. And in so doing, increase the trust that a homeowner is going to have in the recommendations you make and in the process, make it easier to sell a more, you know, complete system that focuses on efficiency. Next slide, please. Somebody asked about pricing. We didn't get into a lot of detail about, you know, Pearl per se. Cynthia showed a couple of the elements of what is in our certification where we detail um, what has been installed. And one, one note is these certifications are created after a contractor that we work with gets us the data about what they have installed. So you know, we don't create these directly. We work with contractors, pull the data in, and then we'll create the certification package, which um, for, you know, on a, a per job or installation basis, um, uh, for Residio's products could be as low as $20 an installation. Um, there is a one-time cost to getting Pearl integrated into, into your business with the setup and training and the work we do to be able to set up a scheme, if you will, to be able to get the information about the jobs you're doing so that we can create these customized per home certifications. Next slide, please. So as a result of the strategic alliance that we are working on, for those of you that attended the webinar today, um, there'll be a very substantial discount we provide on the onboarding. So a $500 discount on the onboarding. There's a couple of other things that we'll do. Um, one is we will create retroactive certifications. So if th this presumes that a contractor and one of the one of the pros on the call can get us information about installations they've done going back to the 1st of January. And as you know, one of the benefits of 
or I should say things we want to offer because of the strategic alliance we're forming is to be able to create these retroactive certifications uh, for homeowners you've done work for in the past. And what we hear from our contractors when we do this is it creates a fantastic opportunity to get back in front of that homeowner for her or him to consider doing work that they may not have followed through on at the, the time that you, you did the work. Lastly, we've got a number of, of assets, so to speak, that we think make it easy for our contractors and the folks on this call, should they want to, to be able to educate their homeowners about pro certification and the benefits that they might get if they were to work with you and you with Pearl. And then uh, we've got some post-sale materials to send out as well, besides the certification, which we send directly to the homeowners. Last slide before we go to questions. So we've, we've created a small website, if you will. The URL is up here. And as part of the follow-up uh, after the call today, we'll include this URL in, in the email. But if you were to type in pearlcertification.com forward slash residio, what you'll see is this page that has a video at the top. And as you scroll down, there's a lot more information about Pearl there. There's testimonials, a variety of testimonials from contractors that we work with to address how they've integrated Pearl in the business, what the return on investment has been from Pearl. And it's, it's, a little hard to see because of the shrunken image, but there's a book a call button. And should you not get all your questions answered or want to have a discussion with one of our consultants, um, when you click book a call, up will pop a calendar and you'll be able to select a, a time and, and date of that this convenient for you to set up a quick 25 minute introductory meeting. So. That's what I have to wrap things up. Uh, I think we'll we'll open it up to uh, any more questions, if there are some that have come to the minds of the attendees since the last time we opened it up for questions. It doesn't look like there's any yet. I guess a question that that I would ask, uh, somewhat spontaneously, is, um, you know, we'd we'd love to hear whether or not this was worthwhile, and whether you feel like you're better informed and better able to plan for the IRA, <clears throat> what's in market today with the tax credits and and the rebates. Um, hopefully, we've done that. We'll likely send a survey out after the call. Um, and, and if you if you like your head is swimming, um, <laughs> that would not be surprising. But I yeah. will say that, again, the, the next webinar that we have planned, we will be speaking more specifically about things yeah. that contractors should be thinking about to prepare. Um, as I mentioned, I, I think it will be a small number of states that can pull their their applications together and get something done via a fast track option by the end of the year. I think the majority of states are going to be looking at doing things in 24, which means there is still time for you to get some things together on your side to really take advantage of all this. And that's what the next webinar will be focused on. Yeah. <laughs> Philip was courageous enough to admit that he was overwhelmed. There's probably a few, there's a lot of information. The other thing I'd mention is you know, when you, you book the call, call to learn more about Pearl, our team is reasonably up to speed on, at least at a high level, a lot of, um, you know, what's in the IRA now. So, um, you know, that that's a, that's an option as well. Okay. We do have another question. It says, can you clarify the requirements for the business owner or contractor to be able to take advantage of this? Hmm. The states will decide what the qualifications will be for contractors to participate. There will be some qualifications. And in fact, we've heard from a lot of contractor companies that they want that because they, they don't want disreputable businesses um, 
taking advantage of this in a way that that hurts customers, that hurts homeowners. Um, I suspect that there will be some some rules around, you know, potential training, maybe number of years in business. Um, uh, there, there could be some, again, requirements around what types of software the contractor has to use so that the states feel comfortable that the predict, projections and predictions that the contractors are making to consumers are, are reputable and credible. Um, but, but we don't have at this point um, a list of what those qualifications should be. I think that the engagement requirements that the states have from DOE to talk to their community, to talk to contractors, means that whether it's your trade organizations or you yourself, there will be an opportunity to share what you think those qualifications should be. And most of the contractors that I know, know who's doing good work in their market and who's doing stuff they should be ashamed of. And there are some some standards that could be put in place to try and ensure that the the reputable companies are the ones who can participate. A few more questions, Dolores, I don't know if you can see them. I do. One says, you mentioned rebate are for the jobs, jobs after the program start date and not retro. What is the start date? That depends on the state. The states have to submit their applications to DOE. Once they get their applications approved, they will likely issue RFPs for another program implementer to run the program on their behalf, like utility programs do as well. Um, and then they will work towards a program launch. Um, we believe that most of the states will not be launching programs until likely later in 2024. But there's no required launch date for anything other than the fast track programs, and those have to be by the end of the year. And I believe the only two states that we have heard through the rumor mill are Rhode Island and Tennessee that might be launching on the fast track program. I think California is going to come out early in 24, but they haven't signaled yet that they're going to do fast track. And then New York has said they're considering it, but again, they haven't committed. So if it is a fast track state, you'll know about it shortly because they'll have to commit to launching in 2024. I mean, by the end of 2023, sorry about that. And as we said, as I said, I think everybody else is likely to launch somewhere in the second half of 24 or even early 25 if they're a state that has never done anything like this before and is really like having to start from ground zero. Okay, thank you. Another question. Can you also clarify if a homeowner can use the rebate if they already have a fully electric home but older AC and heat pump equipment? I think that um, they would want to look at doing the other rebate program rather than electrification um, because I believe that the electrification program is really focused on fuel switching. Um, but that's a good nuanced question and I want to double check my facts on that. So mm. Um, I'll have his name. I have his name. We can respond to him after the fact. Sure. I have his contact Great. info. Okay. Yeah. Uh, will homes with existing HP systems qualify for higher efficiency installs? Um, if so, if you're replacing a lower efficiency installation with a higher efficiency installation, then that higher efficiency should qualify. If, if that's how the question is meant, then that is my answer. If you're asking about retroactive certification, I mean, retroactive rebates, then then no. If it's already installed, it doesn't get anything. <laughs> if, 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 if a higher efficiency piece of equipment is replacing something installed, then yes, in theory, it should it should be able to get a rebate as long as it meets um, the, the product requirement or the savings threshold requirement, depending on which rebate bucket you're dipping into. Okay. All right, the next question, strictly for tax credits, are they available for anyone now with equipment installed in 2022 and 2023? So the tax credits that I went over with you today are available for anyone who had equipment installed in 2023. There are efficiency tax credits available in 2022, but their maximum is $500 not the $3,200 that I talked to you about today. 
and and they apply to a similar set of things, um, but but they're like I said, they're not as rich. So yes, there's five hundred dollars available for for people who did some energy efficiency installation in 2022. The 2023 tax credits are just a lot richer, and they started in January one. Thank you. Okay, it looks like that was our last question. Going once. <laughs> oh, wait, there's another one. Is there an uh, estimated date for the rebates from the government? Again, the rebates come through the state energy office. The state energy office has to apply for their grant money. Then when they get the grant money, they have to issue RFPs to find companies that will help them run and implement the programs. So there's no requirement for when those programs have to start. We just think that they're likely to start with most states in the latter half of 24 and then into 25. There may be some states that get things out the door sooner like California because they have a history of running these types of programs. But I can't give you an official start date because nobody has one right now, sorry. Okay, um, it, one last question. How many people participated in today's session? We had right about 100 people. We had an additional 70 registered that will receive the recorded version of this webinar. And everybody who registered for this webinar will receive an invitation for our next webinar, which is mid-October. So you'll be looking right. for, look for that in your email. And you'll receive a survey at the end of this webinar so we can get some feedback on if you thought it was useful, if you want more information, those kind of questions. So on behalf of Residio, we'd like to thank Pearl Certification for participating in our webinar today and presenting this information. We really hope that the contractors found it useful and um, you can reach back out to us with any further questions you may have. Thank you for your time, everyone, today and go have a beer to stop your head from swimming. <laughs> I learned a lot myself, I have to say. Thanks, right. everyone. Thank Thanks, you. Everyone. Concludes our webinar today.